introduce and welcome our very first speaker. Uh, that is Dr. Carol Miles. I'll be stopping the screen sharing. Uh, the title of her presentation is What is a Biodegradable Plastic Mulch or a Soil Biodegradable Plastic Mulch? So, Dr. Miles, take it away. Okay, so thank you so much, Lisa, for, in for the introduction. I'm so happy to be joining uh, the group today. And just uh, with a brief introduction about what is a soil biodegradable mulch. Um, and as Lisa said, I'm here at Washington State University and we are actually co-housed here in Northwest Washington. So biodegradable mulch is first and foremost an alternative to polyethylene mulch. Um, and it is a sustainable alternative to polyethylene mulch or PE mulch because the same crop production benefits as PE mulch. This includes weed control, moisture retention, soil temperature modification, early harvest, and it increased crop yield and quality compared to uh, bare soil. Um, the big advantage of uh, soil biodegradable mulch is that it is designed to be tilled into the soil after use, thereby eliminating waste and disposal challenges that are really pervasive with polyethylene mulch. However, it's really important to note that biodegradable should not go into the recycling facilities. If you do have a plastic recycling facility in your area, biodegradable mulch is not suitable for those facilities. It will contaminate the recyclant. And so this is uh, certainly a problem and a consideration to make. A brief introduction of, of soil biodegradable mulches and when um, they were introduced into the marketplace uh, started in 1990, the German government published a call for research and development to look at biodegradable thermoplastics. And in 1991, Novamont introduced its first line of biodegradable mulches, uh, the Matterby line. And that product is still in production today. And it's the one of the base products um, in some of the more popular biodegradable mulches used in Europe, but also here in the United States. In 1996, Bayer, um, BAK, introduced its line extrusion and injection molding grade. So Bayer is in Germany. Um, and 2009, uh, the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant um, provided funding to our program to investigate biodegradable mulches here in the United States. And in 2014, BASF um, introduced their first product, um, Organic Solutions Biodegradable Mulch, into the United States market. So what are biodegradable mulches made from? The primary feedstocks are um, bio-based or they're derived from fossil fuels or they are a blend of the two and most products are a blend of bio-based and derived from fossil fuel uh, feedstocks. Bio-based polymers can be divided into three categories. These are first, those that are extracted from natural materials. This would be starch and thermoplastic starch or TPS and cellulose are the primary um, particles or molecules in, in that category. The second category is produced from chemical synthesis. These are synthetic polymerization of lactic acid into polylactic acid or PLA. And these are relatively inexpensive and they're, they've been used extensively in biodegradable plastics. However, it should be noted that their, um, their transition rate in terms of the temperature um, for biodegradation tends to be a little bit high in terms of soil applications, but these are used extensively for composting applications. And then the third category is those that are produced by microorganisms, um, such as PHA, and these are more common in soil biodegradable mulches because they uh, start to degrade under temperatures that are more um, common in a soil environment. So some feedstock considerations um, when you're thinking about uh, trying to understand uh, what a product is. And the first po um, point to understand is that the percent bio-based content is not an indicator of biodegradation. So for example, many of the products that biodegradable mulches that are in the market today are 20% bio-based. However, they are 100% biodegradable. And so that bio-based content and the uh, biodegradation percentages are not equal. And as I mentioned earlier, PLA, which is a bio-based product, requires high temperature for biodegradation. So this is just an example of a bio-based polymer that does not readily biodegrade in a soil environment. However, it does readily degrade in composting. Um, second point is that manufacturing plastic mulch, including biodegradable mulches, involves the addition of plasticizers, fillers, lubricants, nucleating agents, stabilizers, colorants and dyes, and these generally are not bio-based. So a good amount of the content for biodegradable mulches um, is not bio-based because of all these other um, additives um, that are just, they're synthetics. So just something to keep in mind. However, they're still biodegradable. 
The additives used in commercial plastic biodegradable mulches may or may not be produced from genetically modified organisms. And this is something to consider, certainly if you are organic, um, certified organic. Um, this is a, a main um, bottleneck to uh, allowing biodegradable mulches into organic agriculture. And most commercially available PLA and PHA are produced through fermentation using genetically modified yeast and bacteria for increased productivity. And if genetically modified yeast and bacteria were not used, then the cost of these products would go up probably five to tenfold what they are currently. So that's just something to keep in mind that uh, genetically modified yeast and bacteria are very productive and their primary function is to be fast at what they do and to keep the cost down. Bio-based mulches are not tested for the presence of genetically modified organisms because the DNA degrades following fermentation and processing and is not discernible using tests. So there is no testing of these products of biodegradable mulches after they're, they're made because um, the testing would not pick up any genetically modified uh, DNA. Just again, just for your awareness. So what are the standards for biodegradation um, and how are they used? And first and foremost, they're intended to ensure that biodegradable mulch quality integrity in agriculture. So there are a lot of products entering the market and certainly this has been the case in the past and I'm sure it'll be the case going forward that have not been tested. They don't meet, don't meet standard tests um, and therefore they're not, they're not biodegradable. And so plastic fragments exist um, throughout their use. And it's just something to keep in mind that these tests are designed to show that a product is indeed biodegradable. So the fun primary function of these tests is, is to exclude materials that claim to be biodegradable, but are not. And this is a really important point um, to keep plastic fragments out of soils, um, which is a major cause of pollution. The composting standard, which I'll show you in the next slide, is one of the first critical tests of biodegradability. If a biodegradable mulch is not compostable, it will likely not biodegrade under field conditions. So that's just something to keep in mind. I know that um, certainly we, we talk all the time about, well, composting temperature is not the uh, same as soil, but it's kind of, the, it's just the first test that has to be passed in order for a product to be considered biodegradable. And then standards do not guarantee a particular degree of performance in the field, as this depends on the production system, the crop, the climate, the soil, et cetera, the mulch formulation and thickness. But what a standard does is it guarantees that a product is actually biodegradable. So these are the, the common standards that are used in biodegradable um, mulches and, and plastics in general. And the, the first one here is the European uh, Committee Standard, CEN, EN 17033. This was just released in 2018, so it's still relatively new. And this is the new standard that a lot of biodegradable plastics and certainly mulches are shifting to because it's the first comprehensive standard to test biodegradable plastics in an agricultural setting. Um, I do want to just highlight the, the third one here, ASTM D6400. This is the composting standard. Um, this was introduced in 2012, and it's still a standard that you'll see quite a bit on products. Um, and again, composting is that first bar of biodegradation. If a product doesn't compost, it's more than likely not going to biodegrade in a soil environment. And then the other two, um, the Italian standard and the Austrian standard, um, have just, they've been around for a while. You'll see them on products that are sold in Europe. And so they're just really well worth knowing that they're there and that their function is to make sure that a product is indeed biodegradable. So I just want to highlight uh, two of these standards. As I mentioned, the ASTM D6400 and uh, test biodegradation under industrial composting conditions. And that's a really important point to remember. It's industrial, not a farm or home composting. And it's the most commonly cited standard for biodegradable mulches um, to date, just because the, the new standard is still relatively new and it takes a couple of years to, to employ it. Um, so it re, uh, ASTM D6400 employs standardized test methods, D5338, uh, for example, which is a laboratory test, laboratory test that uh, stimulates, simulates excuse me, composting conditions. Um, under this test, uh, greater than or equal to 90% conversion of carbon into carbon dioxide and microbial biomass is required within 180 days. And then the new test is the EN, EN17033. This is the European Committee Standardization Test. Um, again, just released in 2018. It's the first standard for certification of biodegradable mulch films in soil. Um, its requirements are regulated in terms of the composition, biodegradability in soil, ecotoxicity, 
And you can see the other points there that this is all the, the factors that must be met um, for a product to pass this test. And again, it's a greater than 90% biodegradation under aerobic conditions in natural top, top soil. Um, and within two years, um, that greater than 90% of the carbon must be um, converted into carbon dioxide. And the reason that the 90% biodegradation Biodegradation is used and not 100% is because it's actually very difficult to measure the portion of plastic derived carbon um, incorporated into microbial biomass and there's limited precision on the tests and so that's why the 90% limit was set. I think it's really important to highlight that there are these products out there that claim to be biodegradable, but they are not. And these are the OXO and photodegradable plastics. They're made with conventional plastics, high density polyethylene, low density polyethylene, polypropylene, et cetera. And they are uh, plastics that are then joined together in, in polymer structures. They include an additive um, that, that becomes brittle, it breaks apart and it creates these fragments. And then those fragments will stay around forever, 300 plus years or thereabouts because they are plastic. And this photograph that you see here in the slide is from a field here in, South, in Northwest Washington. Um, this is three years after that, that photodegradable mulch was used and that plastic is there basically forever. Um, so the EU has prohibited the use of single-use plastic products made from oxo-degradable plastics and oxo-degradable, photodegradable are interchangeable. Um, and this came, um, was passed in uh, June 2019 and took effect uh, July 2021. Um, here in the United States, just another point to um, think about is that the USDA National Organic Program in 2014 allowed biodegradable bio-based mulch films um, as an allowed substance to be used in organic farming. However, to be um, able to use it, the product must be entirely bio-based, 100%. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there are no 100% products on the market. Uh, there is a proposed change to reduce that level to 80%. However, I will say that at this point in time, there are no products that are 80%. Most of the products are 20% bio-based. Again, I want to point out that bio-based content and biodegradation are not equivalent. So just keep that in mind. Um, in order to be used in organic um, agriculture, the biodegradable mulch um, must be produced without the use of non-bio-based synthetic polymers. Minor additives, however, can still be um, non-bio-based. They also must be produced without organisms or feedstock derived from excluded methods. Um, so the, gen the use of genetically modified organisms in feedstocks. So feedstocks, if you think about starch, for example, sugarcane, perhaps potatoes, um, although potatoes bio-based, uh, excuse me, genetically modified potatoes are not um, a product on the market, but sugarcane is, is genetically modified sugarcane. Um, so any feedstock going into the, the plastic cannot be genetically modified. The products must meet the compostability specifications, the ASDM 6400, and then there are several other there, others there as well. And again, they must reach that 90% degradation in soil within two years. So that's the organic standard. Um, again, there are no biodegradable plastics that meet the standard in the United States. And Dr. Miles, I just wanted to give you your three minutes heads up. Thank you. All right, so I'm just down to my last couple of slides here. So looking ahead, a genetically, genetically modified organisms um, is, is just a challenge for the use of, uh, for the, the manufacture of biodegradable mulches. Corn, sugar beet are two products that are used in, in, as starch feedstocks and they're biodegradable. As I mentioned earlier, the bacteria, yeast, and then the minor, minor additives. Um, it's impossible to test the GMO status of the end product. And again, just emphasizing there's no product currently biodegradable plastic allowed for use in certified organic production. So looking ahead, um, I think that what as a research community, as a grower community, farming community, I think understanding biodegradable mulch deterioration and degradation um, are really important factors. Um, and what's as the product de deteriorates, what's the impact on weed control, moisture retention, retention, environmental factors that increase or reduce biodegradation. And then the big question is what's the impact on soil? Um, and then of course the economics of use and the experiences in commercial agriculture. And these are all things that we're gonna be talking about here in this seminar. So um, that's really my, this is my last slide here. And I don't know if I have time for questions but these are just all the references. We have a lot of information that um, reside on our website. So if you're interested in any of the information I provided here, we have fact sheets, uh, presentations, et cetera, on our website. And these are just the links to that.
So I don't know if I, if I have time for questions. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Dr. Miles. We have time for one question. So Brenda, would you let us know if there's a question in the Q&A? There are no questions at this time. Okay. 